Like other countries, Japan has its own folk tales which are told to young children to teach them morals and values. Even though modern Japanese pop culture like anime and manga are so popular now, there are still a few classic Japanese folk tales that everyone knows and loves in Japan. Today, I'll introduce a few of these famous folk tales to you. Don't worry, I won't give any spoilers. I'll just give you a brief summary and you can find the links to the food stories in the description box down below. First, a quick disclaimer. Most of these stories originated over a thousand years ago and they were first spread by word of mouth. Some people would forget certain details and others might add their own ones in. So there are more than one versions of each story. I'll be introducing to you the most common ones. Now let's get started. Momotaro is probably the first folktale that Japanese people would think of. It's the most famous and the classic. The story goes that an old woman went down to the river to wash her clothes and she saw a giant peach floating down the river. She brings it home to her husband to eat, but when they cut open the peach, they find a baby boy. As the old man and the old woman have no children of their own, they decided to keep him and raise him as their own son. They named him Momotaro because Momo in Japanese means peach. Momotaro's story is about him growing up, making animal friends, and his adventure into the demon island. The second Japanese folktale I want to introduce to you is The Great Bull Crane. This is the story of a struggling sailmaker. He meets and marries a mysterious, beautiful woman, and she tells him that she can make him a majestic sail that every sailor will want to buy. Her only request is that he doesn't enter the room while she's making it. He promises not to bother her, and at the end of the week, she comes out of the room. She looks ill, but as promised, she has made a beautiful sail that earns him a lot of gold. A while later, a famous and rich sailor asks the sailmaker to make him another sail. So he asks his wife to do so, but she cries and begs him not to make her weave another sail. She eventually agrees because she knows it would make her husband happy. Again, she makes him promise not to enter the room, but sure enough, the husband gets too curious and he enters the room. To find out what happens next, check out the description box down below to get the full story. The third Japanese folktale that I want to introduce to you is the Inch High Samurai. The Inchai Samurai was born after an old, childless couple prayed to the gods for a child. But he was born only one son tall. One son is about 3 centimeters or 1.2 inches. So they named him Isanboshi, literally means one son boy. His name is often translated to the Inchai Samurai or the one inch boy. After he gets older, he decides he wants to be a warrior, so he sets off on a journey. He borrows his family's rice bowl as a boat, a chopstick to use as a paddle, and a sewing needle to use as a sword. It's such an adorable and memorable image that it's no wonder why the Inchai Samurai is still so famous today. The next Japanese folktale I want to tell you about is Kintaro. He's basically the Japanese Hercules. He has inhuman strength and was basically invincible. His story is about his battles with the monsters and demons, and his charity work helping others with needs, and his relationship with his animal friends. He's such a famous folktale because he's what children should try to become. Strong, kind and honorable, not trying to fight demons and monsters, obviously. Another Japanese folktale is Taro Urashima and the Palace of the Dragon God. Taro Urashima is a young fisherman who sees a small turtle being bullied by children. He rescues the turtle and releases it back to the sea. It turns out that the turtle is actually a sea princess and her father, the Empire of the Sea, wants to thank the fisherman for rescuing her. Taro is given gifts so he can breathe underwater and he's brought to the palace of the dragon god at the bottom of the sea. The story follows his stay in the palace and his growing relationship with the princess, Otohime. He decides to leave one day to visit his mother on land and is given a box as a goodbye gift. And Otohime tells him not to ever open the box. And of course he does. Again, to find out how this cliffhanger ends, head to the description box down below. Another Japanese folktale is Izanagi and Izanami. While not many Japanese people actively practice a religion, Japan has a ton of gods. Izanagi and Izanami are siblings, and they are part of the seventh generation of Japanese gods. They create the island of Japan together and decide to have children. Izanami, the sister, gives birth to dozens of other gods, but one day, Izanami gives birth to a fire god and he burns her body during childbirth, causing her to die. Izanagi is so angry that he kills his newborn son and then he goes down to the underworld to look for Izanami. This story is a bit like a Greek tragedy with incest and murders, but it's definitely a Japanese folktale. We've just barely scraped the surface of Japanese folktales today. There are a ton more. For more stories, we recommend reading the Kojiki or the Nihon Shoki. 
both are compilations of Japanese mythologies and legends. Let us know in the comment section down below which ones of these Japanese folktales your favorite, and if your culture has similar stories, let us know down there as well. If you're curious to find out more about Japanese folktale stories, check out this book on Amazon. It has a compilation of English translated Japanese folktales, including the ones that I've introduced to you today and some other ones, so definitely check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a like. And if you're curious to find out more about the Japanese culture and Japan in general, make sure to subscribe and press the bell notification. See you next week.